Hello and welcome to my painting video. Today I'm going to work on the sky of this painting. As you can see it's quite dull and it needs uh, freshening up a bit so it's really a sky tutorial. Um, I was thinking of speeding some bits up. I might do because it can be a bit boring just seeing me waggling a brush around uh, for you know quite a few minutes. I think the video is going to be about 25 minutes long, something like that. So um, that's the video. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is I now have a pa Patreon page. Um, and for those of you who don't know about Patreon, it's a way where people can financially contribute to creative people be it uh, painters, sculptors, musicians, actors, all kinds of uh, people like this, uh, who need a little bit of financial help. Now, the reason I need the financial help is to buy a bit more technology to make better videos so that I can teach you more effectively. The money will not be used for me jetting off to the Caribbean or the Bahamas or um, Hawaii. Um, it's going to be reinvested in uh, making videos, uploading to YouTube, that sort of thing. So if you can, if you want to contribute, thank you. If you don't, it doesn't matter. It's okay. Uh, so on with the video and um, I hope you enjoy it. Let me know in the comments box either way. And if there is anything that you don't, if there's anything you don't like, uh, let me know so that I can improve on it. Okay. See you then. Bye. Here we go then, I'm using um, Royal Blue with a little touch of Payne's Grey, uh, just to mute the blue a little bit because it's a little bit too, um, what I call powder blue, a little bit too, I suppose, baby blue. And I, I want it to have a little bit of, um, a little bit of darkness in it. So uh, I know black is in Payne's Grey, but it's not, uh, it's not straight black, so it won't kill the painting too much tend to avoid black as much as possible. So I'm just, um, uh, well, I guess I'm sort of knocking back some of the clouds that are there just to try and make it a little bit more of an interesting shape. Uh, it was too like, too much like a giant dark slug coming across the sky. Or as somebody commented, uh, it looked like a gas attack in World War I, um, which uh, it's actually quite a valid point. It did look a bit that way. So anyway, uh, I'm just breaking up the shape a little bit, um, adding the blue. Sometimes when people put blue on a sky, they will uh, make it darker at the top and uh, you can do this. And it's quite a nice effect. It gives you a little bit more perspective just by adding a little bit of um, something like ultramarine to royal blue. So you have nice strong blue at the top, light blue at the bottom, and that increases the effect of uh, perspective. So I'll just uh, continue painting, and if I think of anything else to say, I'll say it as soon as it springs to mind. By the way, um, just as a reminder, I tend to say this in most of my videos. Um, the brushes that I'm using for this are all from a hard store. Hard store? Hardware store. Um, cheap brushes just for, um, you know, house painting and decorating. I think uh, one of these brushes probably, I mean, it cost me a, about one euro twenty, which is probably, probably in the region of, I don't know, about that's about a dollar, I suppose, US. And along the horizon now, just to break it up a bit. I'm not going to um, worry about uh, what I do to, do, do to the horizon at the moment because I will be doing another video uh, to show how I can brighten up the actual landscape. So if the, if the line between the sky and the landscape is a bit fluffy uh, after this video, it doesn't matter uh, because I will bring the landscape up uh, to um, cover the sky a little bit. So 
what I might do also with this clump of trees is to um, actually increase their size a bit. I haven't decided yet, but I may double the height of the trees to bring them closer to us. And it may give the picture a bit more presence because it's all, it's all very distant at the moment. I quite, I, funny enough, I quite like painting distances. Um, but I, I think it would be more imposing if I just enlarged those trees a bit. So as you can see, I'm not taking any great care. Um, the trees will, um, I'm sure they'll get bigger. So I'm going to start toning down this big dark area and I'm using um, the tip of the brush at the moment but to cover a larger area but also have some of the underpainting show through I'll use the side of the brush so almost like the way you'd use the side of, the side of a pencil to put a tone on uh, so I, I just want a little bit of little bit of blue over it just to just to calm it a bit Later on in the picture, you'll see that I, um, well, actually, I think I made a mistake. I, I covered this area that I'm working on now with much too much paint. So I decided to uh, get a bit of kitchen towel to it and um, scrape it back down again. Still, it's still a good technique to use this because whatever is underneath, I could, if I decide that I've really screwed up the painting, I can actually wipe it off and go right back to um, the stage I started at today uh, but I didn't I managed to recover you'll see in a minute when this happens so again they're over on the right hand side uh, pushing the blue down into the landscape I don't care what it does to the landscape at the moment And I think the painting is improved by breaking up the big dark shape that was coming over the top there. It's much more interesting. Um, the more contrast you can get into skies, and I don't mean um, just having a big dark shape, but having dark shapes and light shapes and dark shapes and light next to each other. Um, also, by the way, you notice there I'm using a tissue to wipe off the colour. I'm not using turpentine at all. I hate the stuff. Uh, if I have a, a brush that's really, you know, I've let it go too far, I might go outside and use a bit of turpentine to clean it. But usually what I do is I just wipe the brush um, and as I'm working and just let some of the color that's in there mix with the next color I'm going to use. Like now I'm going to start putting some white on. And the brush still has a bit of blue, uh, which doesn't matter. It'll, uh, it's so little, it'll be lost in the white. Um, and the way that I clean my brushes, I use just soap and water. So, as you can see, I didn't need to, as I said, I didn't use terps, and that white that I'm using is not contaminated with the blue at all. So, I'm just, um, I, I tend to have uh, the same thing in my paintings. It happens often. My, my main source of light usually comes from the top left-hand side. So, and I don't know why. Maybe it's just something I like. It's not a conscious decision to do that. I just um, I just tend to put the highlight on the cloud on the left-hand side. So, as you can see at the moment, there's a really hard contrast between that white and the dark. So I'm going to change it quite dramatically soon. In fact, I'm going to speed it up from this point uh, and I'll come back to you in a little while after I've recovered uh, the sky that I'm possibly about to ruin a little bit.
Now, um, this next bit, I, I realized I'd put too much paint on and I'd made a bit of a mess of it. So uh, what I did, I got a piece of this stuff and basically wiped it out and kept rubbing it until I got back to some of the tone underneath. Um, certainly helped anyway. It's always good to remember this uh, with oil paint. Um, you know, if you make a mistake, it's not the end of the world. Um, you can just wipe back, start again. Can't do that with watercolour, unfortunately, but you do have that flexibility with oil paint. And also a little bit with uh, acrylic. Um, not quite so much, because... Um, I think that when you paint with acrylic, if you decide to wipe off quite quickly, it can get a bit messy. And um, if you use too much water, it can cause streaks and stuff. But oil paint, at least, is, is quite forgiving. So there I've, you can see I've, I've wiped back quite a lot of it, although I'm not happy with that dark spot, which is just above my hand there. So I'm just going to extend that a little bit. And of course, also, as you, as you do this wiping technique, you know, if you wipe in a circular motion, the way I'm doing now, um, you you get a, a, a roundness to the clouds because obviously clouds aren't flat, um, not this type anyway. You can get flat uh, slabs of colour uh, in um, uh, a sunset or a sunrise, but this sort of thing, you know, the clouds tend to be voluminous and round. So, using a, a tissue or you know, as I'm sure a lot of the old masters used to do, uh, just a piece of cloth, um, you, you can get that effect quite quickly. Now, what I'm doing here is just um, feeling my way as I paint, just to see how the brush is reacting before I actually start to paint the clouds. I added a little bit of uh, magenta uh, to the colour, just to warm it up a bit. Not sure that it shows too well here, but uh, it's in there anyway. And now I'm trying to do the sort of, you know, the sort of feathery clouds you get that seem to run off from the other clouds when there's a, a very high wind high up in the uh, stratosphere. That's that sort of effect I like to get there. And again, I'm just cleaning the brush because it's mixed, uh, the white has mixed with the blue that I put on earlier. So I'm just cleaning the brush slightly. And, uh, has a nice effect. Sometimes I use my fingers as well. Now, I don't really like the way that cloud right behind my hand, where I've just got that sort of pinky colour, I don't like the way it just fades off. Uh, it's actually covered by my hand now. You see that bit there, just to the left of my little finger, to the right of my little finger, I beg your pardon. Um, it's a bit weak down there, so I'm just going to add a little bit of contrast. Now what I was trying to do over on the left there, that dark patch um, at the top, I wanted to get try and get the feeling of the sun being behind a cloud, uh, which would of course make the cloud appear to be um, dark. As soon as the sun is behind a cloud, it tends to darken the cloud uh, and exaggerate the darkness. So I was trying to get that effect so that the sun is behind there and it's just creeping around the edges of this cloud. I don't think I quite got it on this, um, and I will make a slight change, uh, probably when I um, do the landscape part of the painting. But for now, I've decided to leave it in. I 
And just as a reminder to those people who struggle with clouds, uh, you know, paint as if nobody's watching. doesn't matter if it goes wrong. You can always put it right. And every time you paint a picture, you know, you will, you may not consciously learn, uh, remember that you are learning something uh, until you paint your next picture. Then you'll, you'll, as you paint, once you get in the, what I call, and a lot of people call the zone, uh, you'll find that you'll just do it. It's almost like a, a memory that is subconsciously stored in your, in your mind. And you'll remember things that didn't quite go right the last time and put them right in this painting or the next painting. So basically what I'm saying is the more you paint, the better you'll be. Or as they say, the more you paint and the older you get, the more the paint knows where to go. So I'm just softening the bottom edge of those clouds there. And after standing back for a while and looking, uh, that cloud at the top just uh, just wasn't quite right for me. So um, I think in a minute, in a second, we're going to start putting some rays of light coming down. And quite frankly, there's only one way to do that. And that's to be bold and just go for it. Uh, I'm stacking paint on the edge of the cloud. And then what I will do, once I've done that bit, is I'll get a larger brush, or even this one, and just pull it down to make sun rays. It's one of those things that, if you're going to do it, uh, it's always better if you do it first time. You know, don't don't faff about with it. Don't Don't go over what you've done too many times. Just try and keep it clean and fresh and swipe the paint down, and that'll give you that, that, uh, that sun ray. Uh, effect hopefully I've overdone it a little bit on those two two blasts of light there um, uh, but there you go you can always go back I'm just increasing a little bit of contrast over on the right because if the sun was in that position, that cloud on the right there would catch quite a, a, a sunburst. And there we are. I think we're at the end. So uh, I'll come back and talk to you in a minute. That's how it looked at the end. Um, that cloud on the left-hand side, uh, the extreme left, Looks a bit like a UFO to me, but I'll make it cloudy again. Hello, me again. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned something. And if you did like it, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hit the thumb up symbol, whatever that does. I don't know what it does, but uh, hit it anyway, because it's there for a reason. And um, uh, what else? Yes. Oh, did I mention my Patreon button down there somewhere? Help yourself. See you on the next video.